France's day 753 of the unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine, condemned by more than 140 member countries of the United Nations and resulted in recognizing Russia as a terrorist regime by the European Council. On 14th of May, it was reported that 20 countries will not recognize the Russian presidential elections on the occupied territories of Ukraine, which were illegally annexed by the Russian invaders. In my opinion, these elections should not be recognized at all, because already numerous cases of falsifications were reported across Russia. For example, in Dzerzhinsk, Nizhegorodsk oblast of Russia, witnesses recorded the staff of the polling station spamming the boxes with the bulletins after the voting officially ended. How do you think which name was checked in the bulletins? Meanwhile, new drone strikes on the Russian oil processing plants were reported in Sizrain and Novokuybyshevsk. Also, just this morning, the military intelligence service of Ukraine reported hitting another Russian oil factory, the Slovyansk and Pazet. Over the past two months, the Russian oil industry got seriously crippled, losing almost one-fifth of its capabilities. If such dynamic uh, continues, in just a month the terrorist Russian regime should expect a long-lasting fuel crisis, which of course could be avoided had Russia never invaded Ukraine. What is the impact of the strikes against the Russian oil industry? Let's dive a bit deeper into it. So, since the beginning of 2014, 12 Russian oil processing plants were damaged and the viewers uh, must understand that majority of the Russian oil processing industry is located in the European part of Russia, as well as majority of the Russian military factories, ammunition storages and military bases. This makes all those targets extremely vulnerable to all sorts of long-range weapons, as well as the sabotage operations. Previously, Russian oil refineries located around 400 kilometers away from the Ukrainian-controlled territory were hit using drones like Ilsky and Ryazansky plants. Uh, today, Ukraine has capabilities of reaching refineries located approximately 1,000 kilometers away, like uh, those two that were attacked in Samarskaya oblast yesterday. While the Russian oil industry is undergoing constant strikes, the Russian logistics doesn't have enough time to adapt to the new situation. As we all know, uh, the Russian logistic is notoriously bad and it's always been since 1941. Obviously, each strike doesn't just drain the Russian capabilities of uh, refueling their vehicles, ships and aircraft. The strikes also unveiled another challenge for the terrorist Russian regime. Fact is, all of the Russian oil producing and processing industry has been modernized using the Western technologies. The Russian projects have not been developed since 1960s. That's why there's absolutely nobody to help Russia build new refineries or repair the old ones, including the vacuum and atmospheric distillation columns obliterated by the Ukrainian flying objects. That's the picture and I think you can make conclusions yourself. What you will hear from the Russian propagandists is that the strikes on the Russian oil industry will only benefit Russia, just like the sanctions benefited the ruble, which nowadays costs less than one American cent. According to the Business Insider, Germany received information on the upcoming Russian invasion, which may happen in the next two years. German security services analyzed the available data and concluded that the terrorist federation is preparing for a massive military conflict against the West. This conclusion is confirmed by the fact that the terrorist federation is growing its military potential and moves its long-range missiles closer to its western borders. The increased production of weaponry may result in Russia growing its combat potential at least twice within the following years. According to the Business Insider's report, it's possible that the Russian terrorists will attack several European countries after 2026. My friends, as you probably understand, there's quite a few people in your own country who just keep dreaming of exiting NATO and EU, cutting finances for the defense and basically opening the door for the Russian invaders 
marauders and rapists. If you don't want your hometown to turn into another Bucha by 2027, please consider this information next time you're going to vote. Also, this week my channel crossed the mark of 400,000 subscribers and frankly, I cannot really celebrate it because my channel became known due to a tragedy, which is the Russian invasion. But I would like to express my sincere gratitude and respect to all of the supporters of Ukraine who keep standing for peace in my country and democracy around the world. My friends, with that I wish you all a beautiful day. I'm Operator Starsky. As always, be safe.